is with Carolina Hoof Beats TV, and we are in Pikeville, North Carolina tonight with Christina Ivey, who is the owner of Wild Hearts Photography. And if you've seen any of her work on Facebook, you know why I had to do a show with her, because she is amazing. So she's going to give us some tips tonight on doing photography, and if you're taking pictures of your horse for sale or things that you have at home, your family, you know, it's always good to hear a few tips from the pro. And if you're interested in having a photo shoot done, she's who I call. So, Christina, tell us a little bit about you and horses and how you got involved in all this. So, ever since I was a little girl, um, I've had a huge passion for horses. It was my first love. Um, I was always on the back of a horse growing up, just obsessed. Um, photography, I actually didn't get started until about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Katrina Williams gifted me my first camera when I was going through a difficult time. And she pretty much got me started. She showed me the ropes. She introduced me to a new, whole new world. And I thought it was just gonna be just a little side hobby. Right. And then that's, as the more I went on and on, I realized that I was really good at it. You and really good at thank it. you, thank you. And I, I say that humbly, right. yeah. I've had a lot of fallbacks. I've setbacks, trials. It's a learning process, and every time I pick up my camera and I have a session, I learn something new. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you have a, a deep passion for mm -hmm. something, you know, you, I've watched you grow and, and pursue it and learn, and you have such an eye for setting up your subjects and, Thank you. and the backgrounds and things, things I would never have thought yeah. of. So, yeah, you do an amazing job. I try to envision it um, if it was me in front of the camera, and I am awkward in front of the camera, and that's funny to say because I'm the photographer. Yeah. But um, especially when it comes to horses, though, I, it's my element. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm comfortable. I do do a lot of weddings. I have photographed race cars for the Cars Tour. Mm -hmm. um, people in general, families. And I enjoy that. But horses in Western fashion, yes. I have to say that. You have a knack for that. If, for I sure. could, if I could get out West into Texas and take some photos of those ladies out there in their Western fashion wear, I would be on our, like heaven, like yes. that would be, yeah. So, when you what is what is your favorite thing to photograph of everything that you do? You know, do you like doing like people with people or horses or people with horses? Or? So I do like um, photographing people with horses. I recently did a session with Shelby Bird and her gelding, and she was perfect at squaring her horse up, and that's a big thing for me is confirmation. Mm -hmm. I look for everything in the horse from the tip of their nose to the tip of their tail and just I make sure everything lines up good um, and that's something I would like to go over in a little while and actually physically show you. Okay. Um, but basically just horses and people. And you do some rodeo shots oh, too. Oh yes, you? I do love the rodeos. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. I love See, the action. I'm yes, uh -huh. yes, I love the action. The bronc riders are my favorite. Right. Yes, I love it all but the bronc riders are my favorite. Um, I got some really good shots of Tristan McLean at this last SRA rodeo in Mount Olive, and that was pretty awesome, yeah. That's awesome. How hard is it to get one of those action shots? Do you take like a hundred and... and I do, yes, them? yes. It's, I have my camera set on continuous mode, um, and a lot of them are pretty hard to catch because a lot of your rodeos are in the evening, mm -hmm. and the lighting is getting dark, and sometimes your arena lights aren't that great, right. and so that is tough. But for me, I mean, that's, that's fun. The action is fun. It's adrenaline, yeah. Right. Now, how do you cope, like when we do the expo, mm -hmm. we have, um, I don't with uh, fluorescent lights, I think is what you call them, but the, yes. the lights are real yellow. So how do you counteract that? So I set know? my white balance down on my, in my camera settings. That, bring, that helps me out a lot. Um, I do shoot with a higher or a lower ISO. And so that helps counteract that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then with my editing, my software, which is Lightroom, mm -hmm. I do have some settings where I can take the noise down. I get a lot of noise. And when I'm, what I mean by noise is when I'm looking at my photos, you'll see a lot of speckles everywhere. Right. And I can get rid of that for oh, the that's most really part. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you shoot everything manually? I do. And what kind of cameras do you like? Nikon, all the way. Okay. Yeah. Any special reason? It's done me really, really well. Mm -hmm. I shoot with a Nikon D7500. Right. And my lens is actually not Nikon. It's a Tamron 7200 lens. Right. It's done me very well. 
Um, it's it's my workhorse. It's about all I shoot with. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I'm actually familiar with all that yeah. stuff because my my cameraman always puts those things on his mm -hmm. So he's yes. always saying, "Are you camera?" <laughs> you you would love it. Yeah. 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 I always tell him that I, I, when we go to the hunt horse complex, I want to be able to stand at this end of the arena and see the color of that person's yep. eyes. Yep. That That's right. So he keeps telling me I have to cough up a little money. <laughs> <laughs> they are expensive, but they're worth every penny. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, for your photo shoots, you know, have you had the, the uh, have you been in magazines or any of those things yet? So I have been in some magazines, and a lot of them are the color shot. It's something that's on Facebook. They do get edited and published. Uh -huh. um, I've had quite a few shots. Most of my stuff, I've had one wedding shot go in there. And then I've had a couple of Western fashion ones go into them. And they have different categories every month. Right. And so it's, it's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. It's just cool to see your photo in a I magazine. Know. I know. I wish I still did my yeah. magazine because I would, I would yeah. love to have your stuff in my Thank you. But so did you want to get started with some of the technical aspects now and teach yeah. us a few things? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Well, let's walk out here okay. and, and take This is Paul Dunn with Mule City Specialty Feeds here in Benson. I want to tell you about Mule Days coming up the fourth weekend in September starts on Thursday, September the 22nd. Uh, we'll be having a concert that night with John Conley at the uh, Singing Grove. There'll be food, there'll be vendors. Come on out, let's see what's happening with the concert Thursday night. Friday's the big day for the mules, right? Is that right? Okay. All right, we're gonna have mule events, just like a horse show. Come and enjoy that at Rodeo Arena. Also at Rodeo Arena on Friday night, there'll be a rodeo, like uh, no other in North Carolina. It began here with the Southern Rodeo Association over 50 years ago. Come see what it's about. Saturday, if you've never seen a parade that is big, you need to come to Mule Days. It lasts at least three hours. It's like a regular parade halfway through it, and then it's mules and wagons and horses, and it goes on and on and on. After the parade, there's bluegrass music, all the food you can eat. Carnival rides. Saturday night, more. we have more rodeos. Sunday we're going to have something new this year. It's called the Buckaroo Rodeo. Y'all come to Mule Day this year, September 22nd through September 25th. So Christina, thank you Bill Minshew for being our model today and JoJo. JoJo's amazing. Pretend like this is a customer and kind of show us how you set up a horse and you just kind of take it from here. Okay. What you'd normally do in a photo shoot. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to step out of your way. All right. So I'm always looking for the horse's confirmation from head to tail. And what I mean by that is I'm really looking from her nose, her eyes, her ears, her neck, her feet, even her tail. And what I mean by that is I'm looking for soft expressions. I usually have somebody off behind me that's getting the attention of her ears. And with the person, I'll usually place them at the shoulder. And normally I have split reins and I would have the, the client put them in their hands and just hold them really loose. And another thing I tell my clients is to just relax. I'm always waiting on the horse. We're always waiting on ears and eyes, just everything to look normal and relaxed. I don't want a horse's head way up here. I don't want ears back. And then I'm just waiting for that, and then I just tell my client to just look at me, and that's when I just start snapping. So, yep, so we're going to try to do that real quick. So, all right, Bill, I want you to just stand at her shoulder. So normally my best shots are having my clients look off away from me. So you're going to look off to your left or right, and then we're just going to have her. And see, and this right here, what she's doing right here, that would be a shot I would take. So, all right, so I'm going to get right here. No, you can't see me, but and I'm going to have somebody get her attention for ears. Sometimes she's hard with this. Another thing I want to add is I don't like my shots to look superposed. I like them to be natural. I like to see the relationship between the horse and the rider. Um, with the ears, ears are a big thing for me. And so normally, like I said earlier, I do have someone off to the side. We'll use anything from waving our hands crazy, flags, brooms, mirrors, squeaky toys, even playing YouTube horse noises, and it usually works. 
Um, as for Jojo here, she doesn't really want to give us her ears, which is fine. But that I just wanted to give y'all an idea of how I would normally would do that and make that happen. So another um, type of photo I like to get is with the customer walking with their horse. And we're going to do that real quick. So can you take that lead rope off? I'm going to have Bill go back a little ways and then just start walking towards me. And normally I just tell people when they're walking towards me not to directly look at me all the time. Look off, look around, and, and have your lead rope very natural, your reins, just hold it all loose. Because the looser you are, the better your picture looks. All right. All right, so you're just going to hold them real loose in your right hand and just kind of look off that way and just start walking towards me. Yep. There we go. Perfect. All right. So there's a lot of poses you can do. And quite honestly, I'm still learning. Every session I do, I learn something new. I add on to my next session. It's all just a learning experience. And I just really, really enjoy it. So Christina, when you have a client that wants something special, like I know that Bill is a, an incredible horse trainer and he does a lot of liberty and special effects. How do you deal with that? So tell us a little bit about that, okay? Okay. And I'll get out of your way. All right. So I have really had the privilege um, to be able to photograph Jojo over the past three years. She is a very special horse, amazing, and she creates beautiful photographs, and people really love looking at it because it's just different. And um, she knows many tricks, like you can see right here. She does know how to lay down, she can sit, she can rear, um, that's seen in a lot of my photos. Um, and JoJo's right now, star, yeah, she, she is, cool. yes, uh, JoJo has been in the Dolly Parton Netflix series, Heartstrings, you can see her on the episode JJ Sneed. She has made an appearance in The Walking Dead. All right, yes, so normally um, I would be shooting her the entire time. Um, as he does his tricks with her. Um, right now you can see he is laying her down. I would just be shooting. Um, Bill really uh, has particular photos that he likes. He doesn't like to see the horse looking stressed. He wants it to look relaxed. And that includes being in, doing tricks. Um, so right now would be a perfect photo op. Bill, if you could just look, look in front of you, just look off. Okay. All right. And now we're going to have him sit her up. To a sit and when I when he does that what I'm looking for when he sits her up he wants those ears up he wants her to look relaxed and then he will walk her out of it and so all right you ready She's been super fun. So Bill is getting ready to show you everybody's favorite trick that JoJo does, and that is the rare up. It's one of my personal favorites to photograph. It just it captures the beauty of a horse. Um, it's one of my favorites. All right, so as he prepares, I'm going to prepare myself. What I normally would do, I would get low to the ground so that I could get her going up. It makes her look bigger. There we go. All right, and there we go. Tack, I mean that's He did. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So that, She's a good such girl. such a great shot, yeah. you know, and you are such an amazing trainer. Yep. Thank you for doing this today. Yep, and I will add, I, I know you saw him use a whip, and I can edit that out. Technology is amazing. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. I can always edit mm -hmm. stuff out that we don't want to see. Well, that arm extension, I don't have any problem with that because yeah. that's a training tool. Yeah. You know? Yep. So I'm okay with that. Yep. That, that was fun. That was fabulous. Work. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now what? The gates? Gates. Our souls wander in similar places. Even though we may not know each other, we touch the same wind, we walk under the same sky, and our hearts wander in the same dreams. We are one women just like you and me. Our show explores women in the horse industry as they share their dreams, challenges, successes. What drives these women? Well, let's find out. 
So in this segment, you're going to be demonstrating kind of what you do at a horse show. That's right. Okay, so take it away and tell us what's okay. going on. All right. So I've done a lot of horse shows around the area. Um, I've done one in Virginia, which was a cutting horse show that was really fun. Um, when I'm photographing cutting horses, they really like to see that horse low to the ground, um, tracking a cow, locked on a cow. They love that. Um, but Right now I want to demonstrate to you what I would normally do at a typical ranch horse show. I've done a lot of at Cavietta, which is in Elm City. Um, great little place, fun people. Um, right now we got Bill and Dooley that are going to demonstrate the gates and what I look for in the show ring during a, a western ranch horse show. So the first we're going to do is a walk. That is a four beat gate. And really what I'm just looking for is a relaxation of the horse those legs meeting that's a very simple gate to photograph um, let's see if i can get a shot so what i'm looking for right there well she tossed her head let's see right there that head low just relax the rider is relaxed and then he'll pick it up to a trot or jog, whichever you prefer to call it. The jog is probably a little slower than the trot. This is a two beat gate. And what I'm looking for, if I was sitting right here and this was a show horse, I would be looking for that outer foreleg and the outer hind leg meeting together. It makes for a beautiful shot. It really brings out the confirmation in a horse. Again, I look for the neck really relaxed, the head relaxed. Let's see, right there, it's beautiful, okay, and what he's going to do next is the lope or the gallop, the canter, excuse me, the canter, you want to bring her to a lope, the lope is a three beat gait. And what I'm looking for in this, and you have to be pretty quick to catch this, I'm looking for that hind leg, the hind outer leg planted on the ground, and the other three legs in the air. You also can do what I personally, is probably not the correct term, but is the extended position in the lope where the inside foreleg is stretched out, your inside hind leg is back, and your two outer legs are in the opposite positions. Yeah, and that's what I tell myself in my head. And again, during this, my camera is, my settings are on continuous because I do get a lot of duds. Um, the riders just really like to see that confirmation brought out in their horses. They like to see themselves relaxed because nobody wants to see themselves with a crazy face or their horse's head way up here. So that's really what I'm looking for in the shows. Now, I have a question. Yes. So this gorgeous horse is for sale. She is. This so, is Dooley. She's a five-year-old Red Roan, AQHA. So what kind of shots would you take for her to show her best yes. to sell her? Yes, so those little... would be confirmation shots. Mm -hmm. um, and I recently went to Langdon Farms in Benson. Um, it's a stud farm, and they are all about confirmation. And so, such as Dooley here, if I was doing a sales ad, we would do confirmation. We would square her up. We would get the body proportionate. We would look for relaxed head. We would, again, Look for relaxed mouth, relaxed eyes, relaxed ears. We would really just put her in different positions. We would do a side shot, an angled shot, a front shot, just everything somebody would want to see in that. And then, of course, people like to see the riding photos because they can see how that horse would look if it was in a show ring. Very nice. She's gorgeous. She is. She's a very sweet girl, very athletic. So Christina, that was so interesting and I, and I got so much out of that. You know, I think that, that my viewers will love it because, you know, you're, you're such a pro 
but you made it simple for the simple things that the average person needs. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And you gave us a taste of, you know, really how good you are in the things that you know. So um, tell us a little bit about how, if, if people out here watching, and, and, and believe me, my photo sessions this fall, <laughs> how can they reach you? How can they see your work? Okay. Give us a little bit of that information. Sure. So um, right now, my main audience is Facebook. That is my biggest mm -hmm. um, client gainer. Everybody sees through that. Um, I work through Shoot Proof, which is where all my albums are. Mm -hmm. And anyone who, ever, who messages me, I can give you the link to that and you can see all my work. Mm -hmm. um, horse shows I've done, sessions I've done that are for the public. Um, really, me just messaging me on Facebook. All my contact information's on there and I would love to talk to y'all. Do you have a website too? So that's in the works. Um, I recently just changed my name. Everything's changing. So okay. that will be going up on my Facebook page shortly. Okay. Um, and I'm excited about that. All Hopefully right. that's the way people can book through the website. Nice. Yep. Very so. nice. All right. Well, thank you so much. For You're welcome. Thank you all for coming out here. And thank you guys for watching as always. I, and, you know, be sure and call for Sina for your photography needs, especially if you're in North Carolina. Hi, this is Rose Cushing, host of Carolina Hoofbeats TV. Today we're in Oxford, North Carolina at Newcomb Quarter Horses where I take a few riding lessons and I thought it would be a great opportunity for you to have a chance to remember seven tips before you ride your horse to make sure that you have a safe and successful ride for you and a happy, comfortable ride for your horse. So Lisa, for the seven tips for a good ride, why do we start with brushing the horse? Well, the horse needs to be cleaned specifically in the areas that the saddle are going to go on mm -hmm. because if not, it would be somewhat like a gravel in your shoe mm -hmm. and it's not going to feel very good and the horse is not going to enjoy the ride and therefore neither will you. Okay. So we need to be sure that we brush the horse specifically in the areas that she's the saddle is going to go on. Uh -huh. You want to brush in the same direction that her hair is going, paying special attention to the areas where the girth are going to go, mm -hmm. where the saddle pad is going to go. And sometimes people miss the areas here under her mane on her withers right. in particular because the pad's going to be sitting there. So we want to be sure that we get all these areas particularly clean. Right. Step two for ensuring that you have a good ride is to clean their hooves. And so you want to do that because they may have a rock in them or a clot of mud or something. And you want to also inspect their feet and make sure that they're healthy and they're ready to go. So can you show us how to do that? Sure, sure. Just run your hand down the horse's leg. And there, there is a tendon here. Most people, most horses will pick their foot up when you squeeze this tendon. Uh -huh and just give it to you. Right. So you don't want to drop it back down on the ground. You want to make this as comfortable as possible. Mm -hmm. You don't want your knee folded up way behind, try to fold it up behind your head. Well, no more than she wants hers, you know, jacked all the way up here to her elbow. Right. So hold it in a comfortable position and always pick away from you. Do not pick towards you because obviously you could stick this in yourself. Right. So you want to come down beside the frog, just get out kind of anything here that you see uh -huh. that you can get out and just make sure that this is clean. Right. This gives you an opportunity to see if there's any gravel here, if there's any, you know, thrush or anything like that. Right. Very And good. then when you get ready to put it down, don't drop it. Ease it down and let her put it down. Absolutely. Putting your horse first is such an important part of horsemanship from the very minute you put the lead line on them until you put them away. Correct. Very good. First we start out with the saddle pad. Uh -huh. You want to make sure that your saddle pad is relatively clean under here. Mine's got a little hair on it, but um, it's still clean. You uh -huh. don't want to make it, you know, there's no hay or anything under there. Right. You know, don't walk up to your horse and throw it at her. Right. Because I don't care how gentle they are, she's standing here half asleep, that's going to startle her. Yeah. So just ease up here. Put your saddle pad on. Uh -uh. Wants to go up here by the withers. Uh -huh. Okay. This particular saddle pad has air holes in it, so it's easy to put on. You know exactly where it goes. Uh -huh. Okay. Your next step would be to be sure that this part 
is somewhere close to the area that the girth is going to go. Mm -hmm. and that way you know you got your saddle pad in the correct position. Okay. Okay. Very good. And step four. Okay, for step four, putting on the saddle. Now this is kind of a heavy saddle and you're not a big burly man. So tell me how you do this so that I could possibly do it. Well, some people like to put the stirrup up on top of the, the saddle horn. Mm -hmm. I never had much luck with that, being as high I'm short, the majority of the horses are, are taller than I am. So I've learned to kind of use my knee to help me lift the saddle mm -hmm. on. And that being said, the weight of that stirrup on the other side sort of, you know, gives it balance. direction and balance when mm -hmm. it lands on the horse's back. Okay. Here again, don't throw it at your horse. You can throw it on your horse, but don't throw it at your horse. Okay. So I'm getting ready to, to make a swat here. Yep. Good job. Yep. When I put my saddles away, I put everything up on a keeper. That also makes it easier to throw the saddle on the horse. Mm -hmm. So you want to come over and let these down, this being your girth. And in this particular case, this saddle has a back cinch on it. This stuff is in the right area, approximately the right length, because we're going to just kind of touch this here. And this looks like this is going to be about right in the middle of her chest here, underneath. And then we're going to move back around to the other side. Now's the, t now's the time to raise your fender up so you can easily reach your cinch strap. Uh -huh. When you go to reach under here, realize she's kicking flies and, and various things. So be careful when you reach under to grab this girth because they, she might, you know, yeah. kick out a fly and it'll right. just be an accident. So don't stick your head down there. Reach under there and grab your cinch. Uh -huh. And here again, you got an adjustment for this looks like this is going to be about right. Mm -hmm. Some people tie the bow knot. I prefer to use this type of cinch where it has a buckle on it. Yeah. So we're just going around a couple times. We're going back through the second one. When we tighten this up, I don't care how well you know the horse. I don't care what horse it is. If you tighten this very tight each time, it to begin with, uh -huh. you run the risk of this pinching the horse, which would, could cause it to halt or pull. Uh, it could just be plain old uncomfortable. I've seen horses sit down when you do this. Uh -huh. And the horse doesn't have to be what horse people call cinchy for this to happen. Right. Okay, now for, for idiots like myself, explain the back cinch and why do I want this on my saddle? Well, as for cowboys, when the back cinch is on, when they're roping, if they rope something mm -hmm. and this saddle flips up like so with the pressure of the rope, this keeps the saddle from literally flipping up with them. Okay. So I know you enjoyed both segments of the show today, and as always, thank you for watching. Take care.